Oh. <coughs> okay, so hello friends. My name is Aslam Sheikh, uh, your host for this evening, and I'm founder and CEO of Alif, a platform for promoting the global perspective of education and career. This is our fourth webinar series and is being broadcast live on Facebook and YouTube channel. We aim to bring together the top-notch foreign universities and industry experts to discuss the opportunities in the selected field of education. We promise you to have a valuable information session that will be extremely helpful to students and parents for taking the right career decisions. So let's move on to our today's topic. It is trending career options in sports. Yeah, that's you. You hear it right. It's in sports. And to discuss this exciting subject, we have with us the imminent panel of speakers from United States of America and India. So let me do the honor of introducing them. Uh, let me introduce Ms. Uh, Suzanne Goyer. Hi, Suzanne. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Suzanne, thank you. Suzanne is the Interim Dean, School of Physical Education, Performance and Sports Leadership. Suzanne is a Doctor of uh, Physical Education, emphasized in teaching and administration. And she has been invited to speak on the prevention of athletic injuries, concussions, and issues relating to teaching and learning lo uh, locally, nationally, and internationally. Suzanne currently serves onto the National Athletic Trainers Association, that's NATA uh, International Community, uh, and the committee. She has received the NATA Service Award, the Most Distinguished Athletic Trainer Award, and the Gale Weldon, Weldon Award for the excellence of her services. In addition, she received the Springfield College Teaching Excellence Award and was chosen the Distinguished Springfield Professor of Humanities. Welcome, Susan. Thank you. Uh, next uh, speaker, we have got Nicholas Wynn, the Associate Director of International Admission and Springfield College. Hello, Nicholas. Nicholas has worked in higher education admission for over a decade, working with international students to help them achieve their dreams of studying in the United States. I had an opportunity to meet Nicholas also in US during my trip, and he hosted me uh, across and show his beautiful campus. So that is just to addition from his profile. Nicholas is responsible, of course, for the admission related decisions, uh, the scholarships, requirements, and orientation of international students who wish to study at Springfield College. So we welcome you, Nicholas. Awesome. Pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker, we have got Indranil Basu. Hi, Indranil. Thank you Hi. very much for joining us. Yeah, pleasure. Pleasure. Indranil, of course, is a very renowned sports journalist and assistant editor, Times of India a sports reporter for over 20 years, include uh, at the world's largest circulated English newspapers, Times of India, for last close to 15 years. As part of the Indian media, Indranil has traveled extensively covering the lovely game of cricket. He has interacted with professions in sports across the spectrum, right from players to officials to administrators. Welcome, Indranil. Pleasure. Thank you. And the young dynamic, Nitin Arora. Thank you, Nitin, for you? joining us. Pleasure. Nitin is a business head for Pune Seven Aces. That's a premier badminton league, and he's heading the business uh, division. Nitin began his career through interning the, in the client servicing team for IFA Awards. That's a prestigious Bollywood award show. And later in the, towards his introspection, coupled with underlining passion and flair, led him to jo join uh, to join the journey of becoming a sport business professional with stints in sports event management at Percept, programming department, for cricket and football at Star Sports. He co-founded a startup in space of sports and entertainment celebrity management and currently is business head of sports franchisee called Pune Seven Aces in Premier Badminton League. Welcome, Nitin, and welcome, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so with this brief introduction, uh, we just go over to the topic. And today's topic, as we mentioned, is about sports. And in India, uh, we love sports and we love specifically one particular sport. However, for the last few years, we have witnessed uh, the, the interest and attraction towards the different sports and different parts of the sports, and we will quickly talk about it. And uh, let's first talk about, because uh, still, when I talk to the students and parents, and when they want to make a career in sports and sports-related education, uh, many a time, parents and students still feel 
uh, struggling to identify that how can you study sports management you know it, it's not something which you watch uh, live on the ground happening and then how can you do the study in bachelor and masters level and in order to uh, 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 clear that myth and then have more information i would like to invite mr goer uh, can you please join and share that what is it about actually studying sports and physical education what exactly the students study in that particular program and what is the career pathway for this particular course sure great question so when when i look at studying sport i can really put it in two separate categories i can put it into a category of the business of sport which i'll expand upon and then i can put it into a category of the personal development and welfare of the athlete or the participant in sport so when we look at the business of sport which nick mentioned earlier is a multi billion dollar industry in the united states and other countries around the world we look at areas such as promotion of sport which would be ads and and marketing and sales of sport um sport event and and venues of sport and we can look at the management of sport which is really the event management um sport analytics using statistical analysis to study sport and we can look at the budgeting of uh, of an event um and then journalism which is really more the news the stories the books about sport so there's really quite a large business component of sport that which which really is the foundation of the business of sport and then when we look at the personal development and welfare of the individuals participating in the sport we can look at things such as strength and conditioning so a strength and conditioning uh, professional who works on the development of the athlete we can look at applied and clinical exercise uh, sciences that look at enhancing performance of the athlete through a more scientific type of avenue we can look at mental health counseling which has become huge in the united states to help those athletes get to that next level um with the cognitive and the psychological perspective of sport uh we have a large realm of sports medicine such as athletic training and etc to help with the injury prevention treatment and rehabilitation of injuries and then of course the sport coaching which comes from the physical education aspect with the teaching of the actual sports so all of those are our programs within our college that we would focus on uh to develop career outcomes and look at pathways for individuals to um to fulfill their dreams so the business dream of working in the business of sport and then the uh personal management of the wellness of sport so there were really two very different areas um both of which blend together nicely into the holistic realm of sport and sport trend um across the whole spectrum so when you explain this uh, is it mean that the students need to can come from a arts background or a commerce background or a science background and they would find uh, relevant to their background to pick up something in sport this is what you mean to say absolutely so whether an individual is looking at uh at human performance or human medicine uh that's a sport realm in and of itself but the individuals who have more of an artistic background or a management or a mathematical or a computer science background they can go more into the business of sport and i think one of the largest trends we're starting to see now is sport analytics which is piece of that sport management program looking at how to use artificial intelligence how to use science how to use statistical analysis to look at sport through a lens of of critiquing it with using data So it's a it's a new trend um and it's something that's very exciting in the sporting world and looking at how to take the the mathematical science data part putting it into sport and really looking at how to enhance performance or how to outthink your opponent through a scientific method and using some artificial intelligence as well. So that's a the whole new realm of sport management that is starting to become cutting edge. Okay, thanks for that. That's very interesting to note about I just want to come back to uh, the Indra Neel uh, to a very uh, uh, very favorite question, which I'm I'm sure that we would like to start with when you talk about the sports. So once we know that these are the different areas, but starting from the first basic area, you know, from the Indian perspective, the cricket. So you've been uh, reporting cricket for cricket for last over twenty years, and you spend good amount of time with all players and administrators uh, to understand the game so well. Uh, so 
what do you how you see the game of cricket has evolved in over this period of time and what kind of opportunity now it is bringing to the young students who wants to make a career in sport and taking a cricket as an example no cricket of course has uh, uh, grown big over the years you know i i remember uh, interviewing mr kapil dev last winter so i went to his house and i asked him about uh, you know what kind of pride he took playing for india because cricket as we know is is religion in our country and uh, you know when when you play for the country it's the biggest thing you know two most uh, prestigious jobs we have uh, in our country those days like a decade or uh, two decades ago when i started off as a journalist was playing for india in, in the cricket team and serving the indian army so the two most prestigious things. yeah and then it was all the passion driven it's it's there was no science into sports there was no uh artificial intelligence trying to guide you it was all passion it was all your body your mind uh the how it synchronized and it was the ta- that time was completely different and that that time the entire drive was to play for india uh now then uh, post 2008 we had a uh, the richest t20 league which happened and then now it has come to a culture with kapil dev says that parents when they come to uh, meet kapil dev a uh, kind of a cricketer uh they are asking whether their son is good enough to play uh, in the ipl rather than playing for the country you know it's uh, that so the things have changed so much there's a cultural shift uh, and uh, people are uh, more inclined towards making money to sports mm-hmm. than, than loving it you know i i always believe in this principle that you have to love love whatever you're doing and it's it's important that the parents uh, help those children you know uh, to understand their love uh, i i remember vijender singh was giving an interview the other day he's a famous boxer who is a, a, a olympic uh, a medalist you know from india he won it i think in 2012 i think in the london games and he uh, or 2008 if i'm not mistaken so he was carrying his son inside a lift so one of the uh, uh, passes by you know they 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 asked one of them asked uh, whether your son will become a boxer again he said why should i force him to become a boxer i mean he could be a academician he could be a Uh, a teacher he could be a you know a, a administrator i mean he could be anything why why do you have to impose my theories my principle my failures onto my next generation so that that thought process is very important and what i really liked was you before you get into sports management or any such thing you have to you have to, you have to play the game you know we have a, a when when you have bbc uh, health correspondent they, they are they are you know former ca- cardiologist from a famous uh, hospital in uk you know things like that when you've done something been there it's easy for for you to come and uh, get into it so that that that's one thing which which we which we are lacking you know we're pushing our children do this do that but actually we have to analyze you have to see their strength what they love doing uh, they not be, may not be the best in studies but you have to encourage them what they're good at and you have to identify as as elders in fact uh, one interesting point what you made is that uh earlier when you see the any cricket match uh, you used to have i think uh, apart from this 11 or extra players you used to have a coach available now apart from the coach we have got a lot of other vacancies within the yeah. one team we have got physio we have got the different types of coaches so i believe that also gives a chance for the students who are in, in, into about the sports and not necessarily they would like to play but they would like to serve within that domain of, of uh, the sports industry and how do you define i mean if you are good at something uh, money will follow i mean you don't have to worry about money i mean how successful you are people are going to judge you this forget what what people are saying you have to have that strength and as parents it's a duty of the elders in the family grandfather grandmother uh, father mother to tell the young young generation that you know you have to develop that kind of uh, that that self confidence that you know, would be judged outside but what what you feel inside you know what do you feel about yourself is the main thing right absolutely uh, that brings me to nicolas nicolas because you've been traveling around the world and trying to convince the students and parents that uh, why should they look at uh, the springfield college or as a matter of fact this particular domain what kind of apprehension uh, the parents come with you know when they want to follow their kids dream to get into the sports and uh, i'm sure that you you must have experienced in different parts of the world a different types of parents reaction So, what is your experience, and uh, what you would like to share with us? Uh, thank you, Azam. Of course, yeah. Um, I'd like to start off by saying I try not to convince anyone of anything. I try to educate them on the realities of the situation, right? 
So um, you bring up a really good point. So I do travel around uh, all the time. I was in India, it seems like uh, yesterday, but I guess at this point it was a couple months ago. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, parents, I think, have this idea that sports is just about, oh, well, you know, um, you know, what are the chances that my son makes it to or my daughter makes it to the professional leagues or things like that, right? But I think that they don't realize or it's a common misconception. Sports, to go back to what Dr. Geyer said earlier, is a multi-billion dollar industry all across the board. And the kind of support staff that you need for that is incredible, right? So not only do you have, and think about that. I want you to think about any other multi-billion dollar organization, any kind of company, any kind of market, right? You have so many different moving pieces involved in that. So think about insurance, right? I mean, you you know, if you have a, an insurance company, you have to have underwriters, actuaries, all kinds of things. And people would say, oh, you got a really good job in insurance. They need software engineers. They need all this kind of stuff. It's the exact same thing with sports. And they make almost just as much money, right? So if you think about right. the NBA, an international global organization that brings in billions of dollars a year, you need people running their ads, you know? So every time you see a Gatorade commercial or a sports drink commercial, there's a sports marketing person who wrote that ad. There's somebody who wrote the contracts between the athlete and the, the company, right? There's many different phases. So that's something that sports management comes into play. And if you were to go into engineering or you were to go into IT or something along those lines, you obviously, every company asks for experience in that field, right? So, you know, you don't apply to a company with, with zero experience. They want to see that you have a degree in the field that you're trying to enter, right? So if you have a sports right. management degree, you now have experience direct related to sports. So that covers the business side of things, right? But you also, as Dr. Geyer mentioned, the um, athletic side of things, right? Working with the body, the health aspect of it. These athletes are each worth to a team, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, Right. That's what an athlete's net worth is. That's how much they bring in. It's using that analytics and that money to kind of understand the specific worth of an athlete. You want to make sure that, you know, pardon the, the um, uh, impersonal nature of this. But you want to make sure that those machines, those athletes that are working are operating very, very well. So you have strength and conditioning coaches. Um, so I think that the biggest apprehension that I see from parents is they're concerned. Oh, what, what kind of possibilities are there for my student to do this? You know, or, you know, I, I do want him to be an engineer. I do want her to be a doctor. That's amazing. And if that's what they want to do, that's fantastic. However, if they have a passion for sports, they can still go that route. They still need software engineers running these companies and corporations. They still need uh, doctors that are working with these, you know, $100 million athletes. Um, the thing is, though, that they need that sports background. They need that sports element to it. So uh, addressing that with parents, I think it's educating them about, you know, what uh, what opportunities there are for for their their kids. If they are if they have a passion for sports, they can still be a doctor. They can still be a business person. They just need to focus on that piece of it. And it's combining their passion with a successful career. I, I don't see how anybody could think that that was not an awesome opportunity. So yeah, it's really it's uh, the biggest question I see is how to. You know, what, what can my, what can my uh, son or daughter do with this and how can they create a future for it? And it's just kind of educating them on the opportunities that they have. Like, so what kind of programs uh, you would like to give as an example, which uh, like your university offers to yes. anybody who wants to come for the spring uh, college for sports related? Absolutely. So I, I believe we have someone in here who, who can appreciate this, but we have a uh, sports journalism program, right? Oh. So yeah, there you go, right? So uh, yeah. you know, our sports journalism program um, helps uh, kind of work with our students' communications and writing and how to specifically work with uh, athletes and how to report on events. And again, I mean, we have in the U.S., I'm not sure if you have there, but I'm sure you have m m uh, many, many sports broadcasting stations, right? We have ESPN, again, another uh, multi-billion dollar organization, right? So the reporting aspect of it is amazing. We have that. We also have... A, as Dr. Geyer is here, all, all of our um, strength and conditioning programs and athletic programs. So we are, Springfield College, I'd say, is one of the uh, premier um, sports education uh, institutions in the United States, if not the world, right? So I don't know if any of you watching this know this, but in uh, 1891, Dr. James Naismith um, invented basketball 
at Springfield College as part of an assignment. So basketball, okay. I think NBA, everything else was invented oh. at Springfield College. The person who invented volleyball is also one of our alumni. And volleyball got its name at Springfield College in the building that my office is in. So we oh. have huge, <laughs> huge history when it comes yeah. to sports. Yeah. So, I mean, our, our name, Springfield College, is synonymous with excellence in sports. So I really do think that if you are trying to study or get into an industry involving sports, whether it be, as Dr. Geyer said, the business aspect of it or the body and health aspect of it, you really can't do better. And that's why I believe we've been invited today to speak because we do have a long history in that. So, um, yeah, so we, and again, just to say, one of the ways that we make sure students are successful in our endeavors is that almost all of them have to have internships. I, I don't think you'll find it surprising that, um, you know, we have incredibly good connections with a lot of different sports organizations, whether it be medical or business throughout the country. So our students really do have an amazing opportunity to combine that IT aspect of it or the journalism or the health aspect of it and really get the practical experience they need. So by the time they graduate, they're ready to get a job. Okay, that's right. Nice. That's very interesting. I think it's a very useful piece of information for the students and parents to learn about it. Uh, that uh, first one is that you can come from any background, you can still find the connections for the sports management to enter into it. You have got internship options when you go abroad and to get a chance to get hands-on experience and use mm -hmm. your theory uh, into a practice. And uh, being the inventor of the uh, the two biggest sports, I believe that there's a lot to say about Springfield College and the students can just uh, assume and imagine them because I have seen the uh, some of your incredible facilities with the football a stadium on campus. I mean, it's incredible for the students to come and then experience that kind of experience. That's really right. And then uh, just coming to, to you, and uh, now we talk about uh, beyond cricket. So uh, uh, very fascinating uh, career graph uh, when I see uh, your background. So you started with the IFA Awards, ventured into sports, and I'm sure that many students would in fact relate with you, right? Yeah. With your passion yeah. you have done and what you've identified yourself. Yeah. So uh, 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 what do you see and uh, what What's your take on to getting from uh, from another different field to the sports field, and now you're managing the celebrity management. You're doing celebrity management, yes. heading the business. So yes. uh, first, I would like to know from you is that how's badminton, you know, uh, as a right. sport is uh, coming up in the India and as compared to other sports, and right. uh, how's your experience have been so far in these two uh, specific field of celebrity management and business heading? Right. Thank you so much. I think uh, here I'm sitting with historians and custodians of sports like basketball and volleyball. So let me throw a little <laughs> piece of trivia, trivia to uh, the panelists over here that badminton as a sport was invented in a city called Pune, which is in India, uh, which, which is the franchise that I run right now. So uh, the name of the sport badminton was called Pune. That was the first name of the sport. The British soldiers took it from here to uh, England, and that's how it got the name badminton. So, in 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 all honesty, I am associated with the root of where badminton began. But 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 that's where the challenge in India is: how many people knew about this fact and how many people did not. And that's where the real Even challenge. I was, I was not knowing this fact. Exactly. So that's the challenge of a non-cricket. You will know what a cricketer's habits in terms of his foods are, but you don't even know the origin of any other sport in the country. Uh, that's the sad, sad state of affairs. But I think it's changing now, as I as I, I have seen in the last ten years. Uh, I think to put it in perspective, let me let me kind of get a couple of concepts to help people understand what it means to be in this field and uh, why I am in this field. Uh, there are a couple of really interesting concepts. One is mir mirror neurons. Now, mirror neurons are these uh, uh, are these brain cells in your head which you feel and you resonate with someone who is not with you. There is no other field other than sport where you feel it. If someone's taking a penalty in the 90th minute, you are scared more than he is. Where else do you get to feel that? It's only sport which kind of resonates it to an extent. That's where it becomes mirror neurons. You are more scared than the person who's taking the penalty. He's more at ease. And we have seen that. And, 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 and I think I really enjoyed that from my childhood. And I think that caught on to me that I was more scared around. That's when I realized as a, 
a couple of panelists rightly pointed out you have to understand the difference between being a sports enthusiast and being a sports business professional uh it's a thin line uh you need to have the passion to be in the in the field of sport at the same time you have to understand do you just like watching it or do you like to go beyond in trying to make sure that you know you see the perimeter balls you see small small elements which add value to the sport and not just following an athlete uh another concept which i feel is going to get bigger uh, after uh, this uh, this disaster ends is going to be basking in reflected glory right so all of us like to bask in our own glory our mm -hmm. achievements are our achievements we like to brag about it the most but which other achievement do you brag about other than manchester united winning and you're not even associated with manchester united so i think basking in reflected glory is a concept which i think parents and kids should understand about each other you know there's a lot of legacy which gets passed on in sports right a father is a united fan so is a son so that legacy gets passed on and you don't need to be a doctor or a lawyer to know that so i think i think that's that these are a couple of things which i believe attract someone like me to sports because i have felt this at a younger age and uh, that's why i kind of chose this career option and how's my experience in badminton been uh, let's look at it this way i think post post we are we are we are a young country india is a young country we are 73 years into our independence we are not we are not that old in country and we are anywhere an assortment of some 30 countries we are not one country so we cannot treat india as one country so when it comes to any other sport other than cricket in terms of following i think i think it's pocketed simply because it's not one country the cultures and communities are vastly different and that's why we have to look at pockets to begin with to attract the people who are already a part of that ecosystem and then gather more and more that's there is where the job of a sports professional is how do you create a fan uh, i think another another aspect of what you kind of experience in a sport like badminton is you realize that the patriotism aspect is really high you will support a pv sindhu or a saina nehwal the most celebrated players in badminton currently from india when they play for india but when they play for a hyderabad or when they play for a franchise you don't even want to watch them i think there's a clear distinction right. in the top bottom aspect of the pyramid where the top is followed because the patriotism and the community in patriotism is really high but we are still i think a young country to have it to the bottom where the community is built hyper locally so i think that's where the real work needs to go to kind of build that franchise uh, base and build, get that community going and that's where stuff right. like netflix helps that's where stuff like content helps i think we just i just uh, saw the last two episodes of last dance and i think uh, i think it's one of the best pieces of content and i think that that demystifies the whole business of sports of how many opportunities are available in sports i think there's a sports lawyer there there's a sports nutritionist there there's a sports journalist there there's a sports content person there there is everyone involved to make an athlete what what he is and that's according to me what demystifies the career aspects in sports uh badminton as as i said it's 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 going uh, uh, you know it's going uh, from bottom to up if you ask me because we waited for heroes to be built and now we are banking on them to get the league in place uh, because we already had a following for india as a country but uh, i think a lot of other sports like kabaddi i think is a classic example in india where they used top down approach where they said you know the sport has not been played for over 30 years so what do we do we start a league they started a league and it went top down and now even the lowest layer of people are playing kabaddi so i think a, a a very heavy investment and vision from the broadcaster's perspective from the federation perspective is what kind of gets things moving around here is what i feel right so very very peaceful information thank you nitin for that and i really love the concept which you just coined here that patriotism uh, for the badminton so when you, you, that's very really true that when we watch them and yes. they go for playing the national you know not within the country Yes, well I said. take it personally so, because I have to change that. I, I take it very personally <laughs> because I want to change that. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I believe so. So mm -hmm. coming back to uh, Dr. Goel, so uh, I, I, would you like to just uh, uh, enlighten more onto the point like that? If you are like the student parents wants to understand the way I'm just asking you, it maybe sounds very idiotic, but uh, they just want to know that if they go for say X course. then what would be the why outcome of that course you know how do i see myself opting for this course where do i see myself in terms of my career so can you just bridge the gap uh, the connections between the course and the career piece sure um be before i do that i just want to make one comment uh, about sport that um kind of resonated uh, a little bit there is one of the things that we're doing right now in the united states is trying to get normalcy back into our daily lives. The pandemic has shut everything down um, and has shut sport down. And we have been really 
looking for something to show that we're going in the right direction, something to bring normalcy back to the United States. And the one right. way we're doing that is by bringing back sport. And because sport is the common thread of people. And while we might not have individuals in the stands right now, we can watch sport through TV and it makes us feel more normal. It makes things feel like they're moving forward in the right direction. So sport is not just a career, as was stated earlier, it's a feeling. And, and it is a feeling that brings joy, positivity, and something we can look forward to. So I think that the power of sport goes <clears throat> way beyond just a, a career. Um, so I just wanna point that out. So when, when parents are, are looking at what their sons and daughters want to be doing, um, practically speaking, you're looking for a, a major that focuses in the sport world. So we have bachelor's degree programs that are four-year programs where a student who's interested in, in the business of sport, they would go into a sport management program, for example. They would come in, it would be a four-year baccalaureate degree, they would come in, take their general education courses, and then build on those specific management courses. So they would be taking operation classes. They would be taking business uh, management classes. They would be taking accounting classes. So they would be building the repertoire of the didactic coursework that they needed to understand facility, legal issues, management, promotion, sport analytics. So they build on that base. As Nick mentioned earlier, the internships are their opportunity to take their skills and knowledge to the next level. So a student who comes into our sport management program would be taking courses and concurrently going out to internships. So ESPN was an example that was used. We right down the road we have uh, in Connecticut, ESPN, which was one of the biggest sport networks in the United States. Our students are often going down there and doing their internship in whatever they are interested in. So we have thousands of internship sites where they're going in, they're getting small internship experiences. Then their senior year, they're getting 450 hours of internship experiences with something that they want to be doing. From that, they then apply for jobs. Many of our students will actually do internships and they do such a good job that this site actually hires them. We have so many success stories where the students have gone, they've gone down to ESPN, they've done such a good job that the company has said, you know what, we wanna keep you. And they hire them right out of their undergraduate degree program, right into employment. So it's, it's a track that gives them an employable opportunity after a four year degree. There's also opportunities if they wanted to go on to that next level, if they wanted to go on to an advanced level degree at a master's level, they can do that as well. And the employment opportunities are as good. And there's still internship opportunities at that level. So the, the opportunities are uh, plentiful, um, lucrative, uh, and the, the opportunities for them to gain internships are excellent because as Nick mentioned earlier, a lot of our alum are the ones who are now running those businesses, right? A lot of our alums are the ones who are in the hiring positions. So across the whole sport arena, we have everything from coaches, athletic directors at colleges, CEOs of companies, um, owners of, of, of other uh, companies. So there's all these Springfield alum who are looking for our graduates who have had that experience through the internships to, to hire. So they can be hired right out of that, that four-year degree program. Mm -hmm. And I would like to even right. chime in really quickly if I could. We even have alumni yeah. uh, currently in India, uh, Indians that came to Springfield College to study um, and are now working in sports management successfully, I might add, is the big key there um, in India right now. So our alumni network is global and it is um, in India as well. That's great. That's good. So maybe the next time we can invite some of our alumni you know, to join us and to share their experiences. That would well. be a great idea. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Guer. Uh, so uh, just taking the points from Dr. Guer and taking one of the subjects, uh, sport journalism, because a lot of students are getting into uh, media nowadays. A BMS is, is kind of in program for the students after engineering and they would like to go for it. So Indranil, if you can quickly jump in and then share your experiences that 
students wants to make a career as a sports journalist so still uh, it's not that known uh, uh, field for the people they know that uh, you can follow the journalism as, as a matter of fact many students go for a journalism as a course but how is sports journalism is different from the other journalism program and uh, what does it take for uh, you to be a sports journalist being a successful one can you share your experience no i can tell you uh, what happened like 3 4 decades ago you know all the school dropouts and college dropouts used to become sports journalists so <laughs> and <laughs> you know, really it's a fact this is a fact and then uh, like then then we saw a lot of uh, people coming into uh, sports journalism you know out of choice you know i i want i was a cricketer i was a failed cricketer i wanted to be a cricketer at the highest level i couldn't make it to the state level i did play, play, make it to the uh, junior levels but i couldn't play at the highest level so you know then probably i mean no one was guiding me i i used my own intelligence and i thought i should try this because this is my strength this is what i was doing all throughout my life and this is how i got into uh, journalism now things have improved a lot and uh, now we are see, uh, seeing it's improved so much even the former cricketers are trying to be journalists you know they have <laughs> kicked us out of of, of our yeah. jobs you know it's 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 that uh, you see irfan patan who is a famous uh, cricketer i mean all of them want to be a journalist i mean sanjay manjrekar all the commentators are journalists so uh, it's become it's become very professional i thought you know two two decades ago it was an unorganized sector but a uh, lot of new things have come in and a lot of new courses have come in a lot of colleges are offering journalism or honors degree which is which is uh, uh, which is a good thing but then there are uh, subjects like sports journalism which is very important but what i really liked uh, what sachin tendulkar you know one of the biggest sporting icon india has ever seen in last 25 years he suggested a, a wonderful thing to the upa government uh, this was more than a decade ago uh, to start uh, sports as a curriculum at at school level mm -hmm. and no one took him seriously and uh, mm -hmm. he was he was he was he was saying as an icon he was trying to help which is very important you start start you know i mean start young and in so them young that's the phrase they use and then in 2015 i remember the indian government the sports ministry had a plan to start indian sports service like indian administrative service indian forest service okay. indian forest service but uh, that didn't see the light of the day unfortunately but we are still uh, uh, lagging you know somewhere to to bring in that professionalism in, in sports management uh, that's why people have to go out and study which is good you get exposure you come back and help people here but we are yet to get there you know like the way sports journalism has happened evolved over the time uh, sports management is coming slowly but uh, we have to go a long way i think right 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 that's absolutely correct i i believe that it's it's more like a confession box for us you know so you people are coming and you know very glad, <laughs> accepting very openly and that's really nice because i mean this is something what the students can relate to it easily you know so they can believe into this conversation that this is how actually life goes on and this is what you can take a call in your life you know rather and than just of, trying to make of, it big a lot of dropouts happen you know uh, when you're a talented uh, sports person and and there is no mechanism to uh, stop that dropouts you know and we 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 have that we don't have that system uh, i remember I, i can narrate a very special story about myself when uh uh i lost my dad at a very early age so he was the one who used to promote me and then i lost him and i i was not mentally there and uh, i remember one of the clubs gave me a bowling shoes and and i was uh, using that and there had an injury i was not able to bowl that way i was supposed i was a bowler okay and uh, the club owners actually told me to leave those bowling shoes back in the in the locker room and that i thought was in a very bad taste and i cried and i was in in class 9 i mean just imagine so we 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 don't have a system here i mean we we have we are always catered to the champions what about you know this is saying that you know success has many parents or failure is an orphan so we have to have a yeah. you know if you're a good teacher if you're a good parent you have to look at after the weak students in the class not the strong students strong students, i mean strong players strong students they're doing well for themselves but if you can make a weak uh, student a strong one there lies uh, the success you know mm -hmm. true true very well said indrani thank you very much for that also uh, i'll just come to uh, nikolas uh, uh, we have one question mean time i'll take that question also from uh, the audience that do we have a degree in athletic athletic athletical degree in this particular degree or for or athletes uh, i would say that we have many but i think dr geyer might be the best person to answer that question okay 
So, yeah. So a degree in, can you repeat that? Yes, yes. So the question is, do we have a degree program for athletes? I think that, you know, my answer yeah. would be we have many, depending on what you want to do, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, when you, when you look at the degrees that a lot of our athletes are going into, so um, I'll tell you, seeing it seems to become a confessional, um, I'll tell you my story. I, I didn't think I was going to go to college. I was looking at starting a career um, as an administrative professional, and, um, but I played soccer or football. Um, and uh, there was a college that was, that was looking at uh, having me play there. So I decided to go to college to play soccer. I did not go to college because I was looking at a career. And during that time, I found a, a career and it was athletic training. And that was taking care of injured athletes in the sports medicine realm. So um, while you know, I didn't know that that's what I wanted to do, I fell in love with that career path. Um, and that, you know, what I had, um, graduated with and became an athletic trainer for the uh, majority of my professional career. So it wasn't what I had planned on. I planned on going to play soccer and I did, and I was successful, but a lot of our athletes are, are tracked into a profession that is surrounding athletics. So we have coaching as, as a, as a degree, we have physical education as a degree. We have sport journalism as a degree for those who are interested in actually the writing of the sport. We have sport management um, degrees for individuals who are interested in, in the development of, of different events. Uh, we have applied exercise science, which a lot of our athletes are very interested in the holistic perspective of, of the fitness realm. We have sport psychology, which a lot of our athletes are curious about the mental aspect of the game. Uh, we right. have uh, athletic training, so that actual injury part of the game. So when you look at our athletes, they are coming in as student athletes, and they're interested particularly in a career path that has athletics or sport in it. Um, so at Springfield College, probably about half of our majors on campus have some focus on sport or wellness in some regard. So we there's a vast number of professions that our athletes choose. We also have some athletes who don't choose that arena, who might go into a different arena, such as um, they might be a business undergraduate degree. And then they find out after four years, you know, I really miss my sport now. So they go from a business undergrad to a sport management uh, master's degree or an athletic administration master's degree or a strength and conditioning master's degree. So there's different avenues. There's this whole baccalaureate four-year degree program of options. And then there's this another, another layer of master's degree options of sport. And we actually even have doctoral programs of sports. So we have sport and exercise psychology doctoral programs, exercise physiology doctoral programs. Right. So we have them at every level depending on where the student's interest is and what they wanna do professionally. Right. And I would just like to mention really, really quickly. Um, I know that uh, in, in many other countries outside of the U.S., uh, the term college um, usually denotes either a year of uh, postgraduate school or it denotes only having undergraduate programs. In the United States, college and university are usually used synonymously. Like when you're in high school, kids say, oh, I can't wait to go to college. You could go to, you know, whatever university, but you still call it college. It's just the it's the vernacular, you know, nomenclature. Um, so we do offer uh, graduate programs and we do offer doctoral programs too. So um, when Dr. Geyer was saying that we have those different levels, we have all yeah. the ways for students to go all the way to their doctorate program if they want. Just want to point that right, out. Right, right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Nathan, I'll just come back to you. Uh, some of our students, uh, when they inquire about the sports management, uh, when you talk about academics, we got a little bit of more clarity on the academics point from our academians. But from the professional point, uh, the students and parents would like to know that what that ex exactly means when you say the celebrity management. So what your job involves like a celebrity management? What do you actually do with celebrity? You know? What's your sure. job? And when you talk about sports marketing, you mentioned sports marketing, you mentioned sports finance. So what yeah. it exactly is, looks like and what they're supposed to do with it? So I think uh, at the core of it, marketing and finance stay the same. Uh, at the core of it, there is no difference in terms of uh, everything is selling a product. Everything is budgeting for a product. It is just that the product differentiates. 
and the product differentiates to an extent that you have to connect with the product a lot more than you would have in any other company. Uh, you can sell a soap without knowing everything about the soap, but you need to know a player to be able to sell a player. Uh, I think the personality traits are basically what makes you a good celebrity manager uh, compared to an average celebrity management manager in sports as such, because uh, uh, sports is anyway as practical, right? So people are seeing yeah. larger than life people out there. But what right. they don't see is how the person behind it, right? So that trait is what a celebrity manager has to try and capture and bring it out a lot more because broadcasters kind of get you the on-field experience very well. And nowadays they have access to BTS behind the scenes also. They have locker room access also. So you have to understand uh, as a celebrity manager, what are the traits of my player? So suppose we take the example of Michael Jordan. I think, I think courage, spine, I think uh, being a strict uh, taskmaster, all these things are not something I knew about Michael Jordan till I saw the last dance. I think mm -hmm. that's a good celebrity manager there telling you exactly what MJ was through content. So I think it's just banking on some of the traits and trying to get the best out of those traits through different revenue sources. So revenue sources can range from brand endorsements. It can range from, so basically it's portfolio management of an athlete. And when I say portfolio management, I mean from brand endorsements to events and appearances. In sports cases, licensing and merchandising is one of the biggest uh, uh, aspects of revenue, if not in India, at least globally, yes. Uh, I think we are still getting there. I think Virat Kohli has a great celebrity manager who gets him uh, a handsome deal from Puma per year to kind of get him rolling that way. So it's a good celebrity manager who understands personality traits and connects his athletes to brands, to different avenues of revenue and then gets him that revenue collected. That's a good celebrity manager and that's what celebrity management in sports basically entails. Uh, sports marketing right. is not too different from traditional marketing, except that, you know, uh, uh, as I said, you have to mirror neurons, that concept we have to remember because we have to make a fan feel excited about being associated or watching something. That's the job of a sports marketer, to get a fan to come, watch, buy and keep consuming. These are the four key aspects, according to me, of a sports marketer. You have to make it so persuasive that someone who actually consumes your content once has to come back for your athlete, for your sport, for your league, for your hero. And the, I, if you ask me today in India, the primary job of a sports marketer is to create more heroes. We don't have heroes. We have a total of five heroes in the country. And I think we have more uh, A-listers in Bollywood than we have heroes in sports put all together. So I think the, the, it's, it's, it's their job to create heroes. And I think, I think we are in a dearth of heroes and we have, trust me, the stories are in plenty, but we just don't have them out there. So it's a sports marketer's job to get those stories out there and make them heroes. Sports and finance, also, I think. And, yeah. and, and also job of the sports journalists. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think, I think, sir, I, I completely, I completely yes. believe that storytelling is an aspect that we have improved on so much. And I think it's getting a lot with the world now. I, that's what I feel in the last decade. I've seen that change. And, and, and I can mostly, I can, I can boast about one thing that, you know, uh, uh, someone rightly said, you know, uh, when, when sports come on front page, that used to be the thing. It's, you know, uh, losers go on front page, winners go on sports pages. So, uh, <laughs> so the definition has changed, you know, and I'm, I was one of those uh, uh, pioneers of, of changing that. I went sure. to uh, go out in the market and I asked for stories. I said, I want to go and do those feel good stories to, uh, to be on yeah. the front page. And that, yeah. that was the challenge sure. and I, I, I could do it and so well for Times of India. So that, yeah. that was important. You know, it's not about negative. It's very easy to collect a negative story and do it. But if yeah. you want to do a positive yeah. story, positive contribution, it takes yeah. time Absolutely. and you have to work hard for it and people don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Very well said. Very right to say. Yeah. So uh, thank you very much for that. So, uh, I, we're just entering into the last uh, round of uh, conversation. Uh, uh, I would as love to you know, continue this you know, by having so much of information from you and learning so many new things. You know? I never knew about the um, very important fact that the badminton got invented in Pune. I'm being so proud now. <laughs> so <laughs> thank, thank you, you all the, uh, the speakers for adding this knowledge. So just quickly uh, coming back to the point, like uh, if I may come to Nicholas, uh, I, though I saw some of uh, the facilities by myself, however, of course the campus is so big that you really need at least two days time, you know, to peacefully have a look at around all the facilities you have. But some of the important facilities which uh, I was uh, uh, lucky to uh, see is also your uh, i think uh, the jogging track which is i think it's one of the largest uh, uh, in the world uh, so if you would like to talk about three or five most important 
points or the facilities point of view you know because this is what something i will come to nitin and nandren also to talk about the facilities and the infra challenge which we face in india but before that uh, i would like to take from nikolus point of view that what kind of facilities we have on the campus which really makes uh, any uh, uh, good sports college like uh, uh, springfield stand out in the in the world Right. Uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, here we are talking about all the opportunities that students have in the future and how we're trying to provide the superlative experience for them to be able to receive these jobs. Um, and, you know, a lot of that is, of course, getting students internships and experience, but that experience starts on campus. Right. So um, our campus needs to reflect the um, excellence that we expect our students to represent once they graduate. Um, and in doing so, we have invested a lot of money, a lot of effort on making our campus gorgeous and catering to those um, athletic, uh, you know, uh, sports uh, focused students. So our outdoor track, as you saw, our, you know, the track run is immaculate, uh, as is our football field, soccer field, baseball field. Um, and that's all outside. And then we have an indoor track, right? completely enclosed, full Olympic yeah. size. We have Olympic size swimming pool. We have a rock climbing wall. We have a full um, athletic facility. So if anybody, you know, and it's open to any student, all of this is open to any student that wants to use it just for recreation, right? But of course, right. we also use it as a basis for a lot of our courses, whether it is exercise science or whether it is coaching or whether whatever it is, right? So, um, we have an amazing, amazing um, like weightlifting facility, uh, cardio equipment rooms, like I said, a rock climbing wall. And all of this is open to any student. I like to use it on lunchtime. We also have classes that are available to all of our students. If you want to take yoga, if you wanted to try some kind of like high intensity interval training courses, things like that. And these are all used in and many times, and this is the key point here, many times the people that are teaching these courses are upper level students. Right. So if you're a graduate student doing athletic training or if you're a graduate student doing exercise science, um, you might actually be teaching these classes. Right. Um, so it's a free service for everybody. It gives the upper level students um, experience and people like me who don't know anything about it get to benefit because I just go and listen <laughs> to exercise. Right. Um, so it's, it's really good yeah. community. And I think that really is the important point. It is a sense of community. Everybody's working together to excel themselves. So also students who are um, taking uh, athletic training or exercise science will work with our sports teams. That's where it starts, right? So they get a kind of this smaller, um, but still very, very, very competitive level of athletics to hopefully move on to, you know, professional uh, grade once they graduate. So our facilities are huge and amazing and designed specifically around uh, the enjoyment of the students and also the progression of our um, uh, the people focusing on those those majors themselves. Right. Uh, thank you, Nicholas. Just to add to our uh, here at this point uh, for the benefit of our students and parents, many times we also feel that uh, when you want to uh, get into the sports, uh, not necessarily you want to take the sports management as a course as also. Uh, many of the colleges like Springfield, they have got the facilities available. So in case if you were, uh, are going for any other program, of course, they have got 100 plus programs to offer on the college. And if you would like to go for that program, but you are interested to follow sports as a passion, you can do so while following your normal non-sports program right. and still make use of the facilities. Uh, right. Yeah, you know, we, we have given, obviously, that was the topic of today. We've given a lot of... Uh, of um, you know, attention to sports, obviously. But I do want to clarify, um, Springfield College has a strong history, as we've just demonstrated, in sports. However, we are a very comprehensive institution. So I like to think of it like this, right? While we have, we offer all of these programs without sports elements, right? So if you want to take biology on a pre-med track, right, you can do that. If you want to take computer and information sciences or software engineering or anything like that, we have that. And they're fantastic programs, right? Fantastic. But obviously we do have a very, very, very strong history in sports. So if you take, you know, an excellent business program and you do have a passion for sports, you add that sports element to it and it could pop right. you up, the, you know, the next highest level. That being said, if all you want to do is maybe compete in a sport, don't do a sport, you want nothing to do with sports. Fine. We still have an excellent business program, yeah. right? 
top notch. In fact, we're ranked, I think, currently number um, 19th in the entire Northeastern United States, right? And you have to keep in mind what other institutions are in the Northeast, right? So, I mean, you've got got Harvard, you've got, you know, um, NYU, you've got all these other schools that are surrounding. So we're in a very, very, very academically competitive area. And the fact that we can still say that we're in the top 20 leads me to say that, you know, we do have not just excellent sports programs, but excellent sports or excellent programs overall. So, yeah. Yeah. So very well uh, said, Nicholas. So that's that's a piece of advice for the students that not necessary that you go yourself and commit for the sports management as a particular bachelor degree. Maybe you can still follow your non sports or any technical program and still be a part of these kind of institutes whereby you can follow your sports in a free time or the non academic times. So that brings to me to the last question to uh, Nitin and Indranil, if you both would like to uh, add to your uh, uh, your views, that what kind of challenge, now we saw the facilities and infra we are talking about in abroad. Now, mm-hmm. what kind of challenges we face here in India, and that is actually also connecting with one of the questions which we have received in the comment column, if you can have also look at it. So one of the uh, questions is asked that, how it is different to pursue sports management in India and abroad? So, uh, where do we still need to work upon? Which are the areas where we are still uh, struggling and maybe we need more time to develop those areas in the field of sports? I think Basu sir can go first. No, I, I have only one thing, you know, uh, uh, to everyone, you know, whose server is there uh, for children, for the parents. You know, I mean, one hour every day you have to play a sport. You know, I mean, before you get into academics, before, because playing sport is much tougher <laughs> than getting into management. So you try that with the tough, toughest route, you know, play, try playing the game. If it doesn't work out, you love the sport. That's not the end of the world. You can be a manager, you know, you can learn. And when you have the passion uh, uh, behind sports and you, you're, 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 you're getting that kind of uh, feeling from inside, you know, then I, I think it's, it's really going to help. And that's how uh, our, our, our professionals, uh, you know, we can get more professional in sports management. I mean, I can tell you, uh, Nitin would agree with me. A majority of the sports managers we have, they have done a course from outside India. And then there are people like uh, Nitin who has, uh, you know, got a lot of experience to working in different sectors yeah. and things like that and bringing in his expertise knowledge into it. But we need professionals. And this is not a child joke. You know, when, when, a, when an agent comes, we, uh, I mean, journalists look down upon those agents. And when they need an interview, they and the players are not giving you enough importance, they go through the agents for those interviews. So those things have to change. Agents are are really serious people. And what I really feel bad about the kids today in India, they don't have enough space to play their game, which is very, very sad, you know, because it's so much building, development happening. And we we were very fortunate that we could play. Even now also, I can play one hour of a soccer game. And because we played uh, during our earlier days, uh, I mean, when we growing up years, we could play a lot of, lot of sport, which is very important that you play one hour of sport every day. If you're not playing a sport, Go for a walk, that go for a run. I mean, do something, some physical activities. You know, one hour is very important. Be, be it as a sports manager, be it as a, a former athlete, a current athlete, you have to keep playing. That is very important. That that can really keep your spirit up. Yeah. Yeah. So, Nathan, my question still uh, is uh, more yeah. towards the challenges which we face uh, in, the, in, the, in right. the field of sports in terms of infra right. and the facilities. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, as far as sports management and sports infra are concerned, let me try and address both. Uh, sports management as a program, I think, I think it's just about developing a perspective. I think you already know the product that is the sport. You love the product that is the sport. You're following something viciously and you love it. Now you have decided to do something at a professional level. So, I think all you have to look at is which university gives you the best perspective and the holistic perspective of sports. And that's where I think the West is. Uh, um, pardon my words, but far ahead of uh, India in the perspective that they're giving out there, right? Because it's a mix of theory and practical and already uh, alumni building, network done, everything is there. There, there, is, there are more sorted program, if I may put it that way, because they have a huge legacy going on. As I said, we are a young country, we are getting there, we will get there sooner rather than later. But I still suggest if, 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 if 
perspective is something we should look at as far as sports management is concerned. As far as infrastructure is concerned, I think there are three ways of uh, bifurcating. One is public, one is private, and the third model, which is a more recent one, is public-private. There are three different types of infrastructures in sports currently going on. Uh, public, I think we don't need to comment much on the public infrastructure state because Sports Authority of India does its level best to do what they can do with the funding that they get. And uh, at, the, at the risk of sounding... Uh, uh, arrogant. I don't want to get into Mr. Basu's space. Uh, I think that's a space that is very, uh, uh, you know, challenging right now as far as infrastructure of public is concerned. Private infrastructure, I think, in the last decade has gone places, if you ask me, to where we were in 2010 and where we are in 2020. And I'm talking non-cricket. I'm not talking cricket because cricket is happening. Cricket will keep happening and cricket will not stop. I'm only going to talk non-cricket. And public-private, I think, is the recent one which has kind of garnered a lot of eyeballs to... Uh, uh, people and I think that's where the challenge is actually getting solved where the government is lending the sport to a corporate to be run in a certain place and they're responsible for developing that sport in a certain space I think that's the model I think which will evolve a lot and I think that's where infrastructure will develop but at the same time whoever wants a career in sports don't shy away from even taking a job at a gymkhana I think gymkhanas are great places to work yeah. in because that's where the leisure sport is happening that's where you really understand the bottom level of playing and participation because you can't work in a public infrastructure because that's government that's a little tricky so if you really want to learn the aspects i think go for it do not shy away from taking a job because you feel it's not worth it that's what gets you up the ladder generally we all start with the small things right i mean yeah rome was not built in a day <laughs> absolutely and and I, as i said winds of change are blowing some will make walls some will make windmills so whoever makes windmills are the ones who are going to survive from now on absolutely no doubt about it yeah. Um, I think Aslam froze. Yeah, I think he did too. Well, I was going to say, I'll also chime in really quickly. I, you know, I think it's really important. You talk about this growing um, sports industry in India. And uh, I think it's really important to keep in mind when you're studying in, um, you know, in, in university or college, you have to plan for the jobs that will be available in, you know, five or seven or eight years, not the jobs that are available now. Right. Because you also have a cohort of a bunch of students that are graduating every single year, filling those positions. So in looking at the longevity or the growth of the future programs, you kind of have to think about, OK, what will be available? So let's talk about um, right now, you know, the potential impending recession. Right. Um, or with Corona and everything else. So, um, you know, I was just looking at this in in 2009 in the U.S. during our last recession, um, the four athletes, two sports teams, I think it was a football team and a baseball team, the Yankees, spent almost a billion dollars on four athletes signing their contracts. Four out of all these sports teams, right? So, and that was in the middle of one of the worst recessions our country had ever seen. Who can throw around half a billion dollars for four athletes in the middle of a recession? Uh, athletics can, because those are the programs that typically people want to be entertained. You know, they want to feel that sense of community, right? So it's kind of, you know, if you're looking at things like that in an immediate sense, okay, you've got a recession. But if you're also looking at things in a sense of like what jobs will be available in five years, if the sports industry is growing in India, right now everybody's everybody's saturating and focusing. And I can say this, I think, fairly confidently because I travel there frequently and I speak to students. There is a lot of interest still in engineering and, you know, and medicine and things like that. Right. But if that's been the case for the last 15 years, um, there's only so much market space. Right. So yeah. an engineer graduating, you know, 10 years ago, maybe making 100K out of college now be making 50 or 40 because, you know, they have to start an entry level position the smaller. But if the sports field is growing, they could be the pioneers. So in five, 10 years, when you have kind of hit this critical mass, it's a really good place to. Be. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Thank you very much for that. Sure. Right. Uh, just uh, so just to summarize, guys, uh, I think we have taken almost all the questions and we have touched upon all the points. Uh, I'm not missing anything. I'm just checking it. I think someone has okay. asked if it's a good idea for a fresher to pursue a job in sports broadcasting. I think it's the best time to get into a broadcasting job. But Nitin, I would beg okay. to, uh, I would, I would, uh, won't say that because uh, I don't know how sports I industry think... look look like after after everything settles down. I think from now on, broadcaster is king. I think that's how I'll put it in India because, <laughs> because I think except for the big three, no Star or Sony are not going to pay for any other league. So I think they're going to save all of that money and hire more people and get better content out there. That's what I, I feel. Hope so. I hope so. I keep my. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so just to wrap up the session, uh, I would like to uh, request all of our speakers to just give one uh, line of advice to our students and parents who are watching or who would be watching uh, this video afterwards. So one piece of advice on behalf of sports and sports industry to our students and parents who wants to make a career. Uh, starting with uh, Dr. Guer. Um, my one piece of advice is, is do what you love, do what you're passionate about. And uh, don't look at the, the end goal as a salary. Look at the end goal of your own personal satisfaction and your drive. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Dr. Guer. I really love the concept which you coined uh, that uh, the post-COVID, if there's something which can bring everyone together, is the sports. It's a sense of community. It's a sense of uh, uh, pride. It's a sense of uh, patriotism. And uh, I totally, totally believe in that state. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Uh, Nicholas? Yeah, I was going to say, um, I, uh, I think the takeaway here should be thinking about um, sports uh, from, a, you know, if coming to the U.S. or studying in a university is an investment, right? You're not just spending that money to, to, uh, to study, right? You know, you're spending that because the idea is that once you graduate, you will see that return on investment going to an excellent school, going to a place like Springfield College. Um, so I guess keep in mind that if you are interested in a sports career, um, there's a phenomenal amount of opportunities for you, right? Uh, trying to get away from the stigma of that it's like, oh, it's a passion. It's just a passion. It very well could be a passion. And as Neaton said, that's one of the things that's amazing about sports. You know, it does bring people together, but um, it's not, it, it can also be a passion and it can also be a very successful career. So if you are thinking about it, give it some more thought. <laughs> Thank you, Nicholas. Indrani. No, I have only one piece of advice. Keep playing. <laughs> hey, it's a good one. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Okay. Don't stop, don't stop playing. I mean, you know, the day you stop I, playing, you're dead. Yeah, that's true. Yeah? That's true. One life, you just keep playing. That's the best thing. It, it unites people. I think I two things I always keep saying. It's one is music and another is playing sport. I mean, nothing can come close to these two uh, elements of life. You know, you should enjoy every moment right. of it. Agreed. <laughs> Absolutely right. I just on a lighter note, Indrani, so if you keep playing, either you become a successful sportsman or you become a journalist. <laughs> <laughs> or a sports manager. Or a sports manager. Or a sports manager. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yes. Yes, uh, My only one piece of advice would be we're in the middle of something which we are calling a crisis. The word crisis originates from Greek where it means, you know, uh, you have to take a decision of what's worthwhile. Uh, take that decision what's worthwhile and if sports is your decision trust me I think there are at least 11 different fields in sports which are going to grow more than 10 percent everywhere in the world for the next 10 years Agreed. just go for it. Yeah. <laughs> thank you thank you that's that's great uh, thank you very much uh, all our uh, esteemed uh, speakers uh, I mean, we know that we would have talked another one hour and still we would have not even touched upon the uh, the surface of the topic but uh, whatever we have spoken today, I think it brings a lot of clarity, at least at the basic level, to various points uh, uh, from the professional to academics point of view. So I'd like to thank Suzanne, uh, Dr. Goyal, Nicholas, Indradil, and Nitin for joining me today. Pleasure. It was Pleasure. truly a wonderful session. Pleasure, yeah. uh, thank you very much. <laughs> it was truly a wonderful session in sports and physical education. If anyone asks any further questions, please feel free to contact us on Facebook or onto our website, alif.l. And uh, I promise you that uh, we will be back again next week with another interesting topic and with some amazing, mm -hmm. utterly talented speakers to enlighten all of us on the given topic. So thank you very much, uh, thank friends. You. And uh, thank you. see you soon. Thank you, everyone. Yes, you can. Bye-bye. 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 B